Hi, my name is Trevor Klee. This is the GRE text completion sentence equivalence process. So for today, I'm only going to be going over the text completion part, which is the vocab part that you're probably used, for, used to. Um, so a lot of people or a lot of my students are surprised when I tell them there has been is a process because they say, isn't the process just doing a bunch of vocab flashcards? And I say, uh, not quite. So the vocab side is like, you know, literally memorizing the vocabulary is like 70% of it. But the process, how we actually analyze and answer the questions is the last 30. So, you know, if you've noticed yourself getting questions wrong, even when you know uh, the, the words, then you need this process. So let's, let's talk about the process. Well, it's pretty straightforward. We're gonna uh, read the question. We're gonna analyze the blank or blanks for keywords. Now, these are always going to be clues that tell us what goes in the sentence. So some of the keywords that we're looking for are stuff like, you know, um, synonyms or antonyms. And we're also looking for, you know, although or and. So the, these are the sort of keywords we'll be looking for. Once we feel confident that we've identified the keywords that tell us what goes in the blank, then pretty straightforwardly, we go to the answer choices for words that fit in the blank or blanks. Now, uh, we have to be a little flexible here. So I feel like a lot of times my students will try to guess what should go in the blank before, uh, before they read the answer choices. And I mean, that's okay, but the problem is you, you're liable to get really thrown off if you don't see the right word. So I actually usually tell my students, don't guess before you look at the uh, answer choices. Don't try to guess the word. So really just analyze the blank of blanks. And then last up, I would say you should be careful of dependencies. Now this is especially going to be true on the two blank or three blank um, uh, text completion questions. So if we say something like, you know, the woman blank, but she uh, blank the bakery, but she blank the cookies, right? She might love the bakery, but hate the cookies, or she may hate the bakery and love the cookies. And so, you know, those words are going to depend on each other. So we really, uh, if we have these sorts of dependencies, we're not necessarily going to be able to start with the first blank. We have to just start with whichever blank uh, is easiest. And then we'll work our way from there. Blank is easiest. So this is our process. It's pretty straightforward. We analyze the blank or blanks for keywords, although, but also, you know, uh, synonyms or antonyms that are present in the sentence. We look at the answer choices and we see what fits in the blank or blanks. Um, and we don't guess what word. We just look to see what the answer choice gives us. And then last, we're careful of dependencies. If we realize that one blank depends on another, we just start with whatever blank is easiest. So this is our process. Um, so I'm gonna show you this process uh, in effect on a couple uh, vocab questions. And these are questions I've created. Uh, if you want a bunch more vocabulary questions and also a huge list of vocabulary, you can check out my guide to GRE vocabulary. Uh, at gumroad.com slash Trevor Klee that has all my GRE guides and also my list of GRE words. Check it out. All right, cool. Let's get into our examples. So we're going to start here with some single blank. Shouldn't be too hard. So single blank, our first step is what goes in here. Okay, so keywords. We've got ironically, 
and surprisingly icy. And we're talking about Greenland. So Greenland was surprisingly icy and ironically, so what would be ironic about Greenland? Well, if it wasn't green, right? That would be ironic because ironic is something that goes against expectations. Especially because this guy apparently was surprised that it was icy. So these are keywords. He was surprised that it was icy and something was ironic, right? So ironically not frosty at all, that doesn't make sense. We already said it was icy. So no, ironically not ambiguous at all, makes no sense. Ironically not verdant at all, that's pretty good, right? Verdant, verde means green. So if it's not green at all, that would be pretty ironic. Now, here's one that you might be tripped up by, like florid, because florid literally means flowery. Now, you might say, okay, well, it's surprisingly icy, so uh, it was not florid at all. That's probably not true. That's probably true. If it's icy, there's probably not a lot of flowers. But it's not really ironic for it to not be flowery in the same way it's ironic for it not to be green. So we wouldn't do florid. And austere, which means like sort of severe or barren, um, an icy place might would probably be austere. So if, uh, you know, it, it's probably not not austere. So here, uh, you know, no dependencies because it's single blank, but we did have to get our keywords. So we had quite a few keywords here. First of all, it was uh, Greenland. So Greenland, it was ironic. So it was against expectations. So it was not something. So ironically, not something, Greenland. It was ironically not green. And we already got a clue for that because it was surprisingly icy. So apparently he expected from the name to be accurate, whoever wrote this. All right, let's go on to the next one. Here's another single blank. With such blank standards, it's no wonder the power plant had a, had a meltdown. So here our key is it's no wonder they had a meltdown. So if we're saying something's no wonder that it had a meltdown, well, you know, uh, no wonder means something like obvious, right? So if it's obvious it had a meltdown, probably its standards are like non-existent. So lax is pretty good here. Lax literally means like relaxed or even lazy. So yeah, you'd expect a power plant to have a meltdown if it had lax standards. Now, arbitrary might be tempting here. You might say, okay, well, arbitrary means there's no good reason for it. Well, yeah, but that wouldn't necessarily make it so obvious that it would have a meltdown. You know, if their standards are arbitrary, they might be good and they might be bad but that doesn't necessarily make it obvious that it would have a meltdown. So that's when our keywords are really important here. All right, um, and then our other words really don't make sense. Pallid means like pale, so that doesn't work. Gainsaid is just like someone saying against it, so it doesn't make sense, and echelon is actually a noun. So uh, here our key word was uh, that it was no wonder it had a meltdown, right? So it was obvious it had a meltdown. Why was it obvious? Because its standards were relaxed or lazy. All right, so these single blank aren't so bad if you know the words. Let's try some double blank. All right, here we're gonna have to be um, careful of our dependencies. So this says she took blank at the blank threatening a lawsuit if the vague but suggestive statement was not retracted. So here, this blank is probably easiest to start with because we're going to need to know she's reacting some way to this. And we'll figure out what she's reacting to uh, later. So here, our key is it's a vague but suggestive statement. So we've got imbroglio, imprecation, or implication. So um, 
here it's not imbroglio because that means like sort of like a quandary or like something you're stuck in um so actually so we're stuck between imprecation and implication so implication might be something that you'd threaten a lawsuit about but a vague but suggestive statement apply uh is an imprecation so if we are really wanting to say like you know this is something that's like you know uh something that you would actually threaten a lawsuit about or be like really upset about it would be an imprecation because that would you're not saying it but you're suggesting it and an implication might be something that you're not necessarily suggesting but it's something that other people are drawing from it so here our key blank here was suggestive now if she's threatening a lawsuit about the imprecation well what should go in the first blank um, well, umbrage is the only one that makes sense because that means basically offense. Fraca is like a fight or, a, you know, some sort of scuffle. So that doesn't work and an incision is a cut. So, uh, here we needed to, uh, make sure we understood how our blanks fit together, which is she's threatening a lawsuit shows she's obviously offended. It was a vague but suggestive statement, so it was an implication. All right, let's try another one here. So this is another double blank. Uh, the doctor was blank about the possibility of finding which virus was blank for the man's sickness, refusing to make commitment one way or another. So here, our key for this blank is that he's refusing to make a commitment one way or another. Now, Agog is definitely wrong because agog means something like, you know, uh, sort of shocked, right? So agog is shocked. So that doesn't work. Now, KG and circumspect are pretty close. But our question is really, you know, what should a doctor be? Now, KG is like, you don't want to make a commitment because you're suspicious. And circumspect is you don't want to make a commitment because you're like wise or careful, you know, sort of, you know, that sort of thing. So what would we expect like a doctor to be like not making a commitment because he's suspicious or not making a sus commitment because he's like, you know, uh, wise or careful? Well, if he's trying to like, you know, saying what sort of virus is responsible for the man's sickness, He's probably not suspicious. He's not expecting people are going to like call him out on it. He's just trying to be careful about it. So circumspect works better there. Now, uh, in terms of this blank, uh, finding which virus was blank for the man's sickness, presumably the virus is causing it. So culpable makes sense. Uh, you might be tempted by corporal, which does sound uh, similar, but that means like relating to the body. So that doesn't really make sense here. And limpid, uh, which is a word that I used to get confused about all the time, literally just means clear, like a limpid pool of water. All right, cool. Now let's try the triple blank. These are always the hardest um, triple blanks because they're they really depend on one another. Um, so let's let's see what we can do here. So some thought that the blank statements were not enough for the profound occasion, calling them blank and even proof and underlying blank on the part of the speaker. So um, if something's not enough for the profound occasion, well, let's, let's just go one by one. Uh, we've got anodyne, iconoclastic, or droll. So iconoclastic means like literally means breaking idols, but like can also mean metaphorically like breaking idols. Meanwhile, droll just means funny or at least attempting to be funny. Um, so if something's not enough, so you might be annoyed if someone tries to, you know, make a droll statement on a profound occasion, but you wouldn't say it's not enough. Anodyne works better because anodyne, anodyne is like, um, like uh purposefully harmless you know it's like 
someone's like, what do you think? And you're like, oh, that's nice. So now this is what's going to give us clues for our next blank. Because what goes along with anodyne? Well, if they think the anodyne statements are not enough, they're going to call them something even worse than anodyne. So dignity doesn't work here. That's a noun. Calling them profound? No. So if they're saying, if they're saying it's not enough, they're not going to call these statements profound. So we're left with banal, which means like boring. So you see here this blank, it's going to affect this blank. We're calling the statements not just anodyne, but banal. They're not just harmless, but actively boring. And then even proof. So now we're going to go even further. Even proof of an underlying something on the part of the speaker. So now we're going to talk about something about the speaker. So if we say the statements are harmless or boring, well, what are we going to say? Underlying vapidity works. So vapidity literally means like he's empty. It's like the guy, the guy's got nothing in his head. Leviathan doesn't make sense. That's just a monster. And edification means like something. Uh, it'd be weird to use in this context, but generally speaking, it means education. So here are three blanks all affected each other. It was anodyne, and then they were banal, and then even proof of an underlying vapidity. So our three blanks affect each other. So yeah, so this is essentially our uh, going to be our process for all uh, text completion questions. Um, we analyze the blanks for keywords, and then we look at our answer choices, try to fill in the blanks. And if it's a double blank or triple blank, we're going to start with the blank that's easiest and then figure out the other blanks from there. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, if you uh, like this video and you want to see more, please like and subscribe. And also, uh, if you want a bunch more text completion and sentence equivalence questions, uh, as well as uh, other GRE verbal books, please uh, get my guides at gumroad.com slash Thanks.